Hi, I'm Monroe Bergdorf, and today I'm going to be painting a self-portrait for Pop Buzz. I want to preface this by just saying I'm not good at painting. I really loved it when I was in school, but my art teacher was just like, you're not good. You're not good. So that dream crashed. But today, who got the last laugh? I'm gonna be painting this look from the Gay Times Honours. Last year was very camp, lots of colour, lots of over-the-top silhouettes, and this year I'm feeling like a little, a little gothic, a little gothic slutty. This is a bit of a crispy brush, isn't it? <laughs> oh God, this is gonna be so bad, guys. I apologise in advance. Monroe is many things. I feel like we're all many things, but when you're in, I guess, the public eye and what you talk about and what you represent is so visual, you often get shoehorned into being one thing. I'm really about trying to remind everybody that you can be whatever you want. And that's really what I try to lead by example. I love like fashion, I love modeling, but then I also really love activism and using fashion as a method of challenging people's ideas. I keep forgetting that I actually need to paint as well as talking. Um, and challenging people's ideas about, you know, what it means to be trans, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be queer. I think that all of these labels that we have, they only really serve you if they're empowering. So I started off really working in fashion PR. Um, then I left that job and decided to become a DJ as one does in their 20s. And <laughs> yeah, just kind of partied for a living for like a decade, which was amazing. I learned so much about myself and it gave me the freedom to be myself. I think that queer nightlife is really the foundations for the community. Then I started venturing into modeling. Not that I ever really saw myself as a model, but I knew that I wanted to use it as a platform to speak about why we only see certain things as beautiful, why we only see certain people as beautiful. Why can't a trans woman be beautiful? Why can't we all be part of something that is so empowering. The trans community is inspired so much within the fashion industry, but we're often not really invited to the table, or we weren't. I think a lot of people came to know of me posting about the Charlottesville riots and then it going viral and then being sacked from the brand that I was working with at the time, which was obviously a really difficult period of time to go through. It was a really difficult moment of transition for me, working within the fashion in industry, but not really making any money at all, to then becoming, you know, a public figure overnight and still not having any money. <laughs> and then being kind of blackballed by the industry because I was seen as too controversial to work with. I think it was a moment of reflection for a lot of people as well, to really reckon with themselves and how they understand racism and like why were they perhaps more shocked by my colourful anger, shall we say, um, with regards to a really brutal terrorist attack. Why was the focus on my reaction rather than what has actually happened? And looking at, you know, the reaction to George Floyd um, in 2020, I think people started to see what had happened to me in a different light. How we talk about racism is really important if we hope to stamp it out. And we can't be angry at people for being angry at a system that impacts them on a cellular level. So less policing of responses, more protesting of the, the violence that is enacting on us. I think transitioning is something that we all go through. Whether or not it's a career transition, or if it's transitioning out of what is expected of us from our parents, of society. I think it's really important to understand that everything evolves, nothing stays the same forever. And as I say in the book, in one way or another, we all transition. Even science, science evolves. They once believed that the world was flat. Some people still do, but that's a different conversation. Um, I think it's really, really important to open yourself up to the possibility of being wrong and that two things can be true at one time. What 
is a woman for one person is not going to be what is a woman for the next. People are different and that's a fact. We all can be whoever we want to be and just because we don't fit into a narrow notion of what one person views as real doesn't mean that it's not. Until I met other trans women, I really had so much shame because I thought that the way that I was feeling was an anomaly. I thought that I was the only one and that's a very lonely place to be in. Once I started making friends with other trans women, I started being able to talk about my experiences and that really gave me a way to root where those feelings were coming from and I discovered that it was all the government's fault. <laughs> um, I discovered that it, it wasn't, you know, there's nothing wrong with me, it's, a, it's society. And we live in a, in a society that not only pushes trans people into a life of shame, but really pushes us all into a life of shame because if we're not living for ourselves in a way that feels important, then what's the point? The reason why we're seeing so many people lash out at the trans community is ultimately saying, well, I'm not free, so why should you be? And I'm not happy, so why should you be? If you're happy within yourself, then you don't drag other people down. So if you feel the need to diminish someone else's humanity, I think you should really question whether or not you're diminishing your own. A lot of people are starting to wake up to that. We've seen heterosexual men start to, you know, wake up to the fact that gay men are not after your private parts. They're not, they're not interested. You're not that special. And I think that hopefully we'll wake up to the fact that trans women are not interested in what's happening in public toilets. We just want to go to the bathroom. We're just seeing the same thing happen over and over again. And it's really, it's really silly. I love social media because I feel like in so many ways it's really opened up our community in a way to be able to see each other. I think it's really shown us how big and how beautiful and diverse the community is. But also I think it comes with so many pitfalls. I just, I struggle with it. Where's the line between authenticity and performativity? And I don't really like the feeling of performing myself. I prefer to exist in the real world personally, but I do have a lot of followers and I think that that's happened naturally. I haven't really ever chased the followers. Unfortunately, a lot of them are there for the drama. <laughs> or have come from the drama. So um, I love you guys. <laughs> My career has been very eventful, so I'm sure that there's been moments of popcorn. I did a job with Charlie XCX <laughs> and she was releasing a single and I was part of the promo campaign. It was basically this big brother house that had gone into disarray and everyone was covered in blood and I was topless and I had like two star pasties on my nipples and I was covered in blood. And the producer was like, take a picture on the floor and I was like yeah sure like it can and I didn't know that one day the Daily Mail would take that picture and run an article saying that I was um, part of a demonic ritual for moon blood ritual summoning um, spirits it's funny because it's kind of true <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always had an interest in, you know, the occult and stuff like that. But I mean, that's definitely not what I was doing at a Charlie XCX promo party. So that was interesting to say the least. Um, I think that really we need to just like make social media work for us rather than us work for it because they're just platforms owned by billionaires who make money off of our data. Don't feel beholden to having to be so present. Enjoy the real world and use social media as a condiment rather than a main course. The most famous person I received a, a DM from, oh, this is very name droppy, isn't it? I was asked this question, I just want to preface this, I'm not dropping names. Um, <laughs> oh God, probably Madonna. You don't get more famous than Madonna, do you? And like, I can't draw fingers. <laughs> Shit. Um, I think I became a new woman the day that she followed me because when you're recognised by Madonna, where do you go from there really?
I think the best piece of advice that I've been given is fall in love with yourself and fall in love with other people and treat those people as if you were treating your best friend and treat yourself like your best friend too. It makes life so much easier when you're not fighting yourself and when you don't see other people as adversaries to be fighting too. So yeah, just have a great time. Life's hard enough, lighten up. If you're planning on going to your first Pride event this year, remember what Pride is born out of. And it's more than a festival, it's more than a party. Pride is really, at its heart, a protest. That's not to say that you can't have fun. Pride is also an opportunity to have lots and lots of fun. But also just be mindful, if you're an ally, of why we are all partying, why we are all um, expressing ourselves in such an overt manner is because society tells us that we can't. And coming together on that day is an opportunity to relinquish all of that shame. Just bathe in each other's queerness and just have a great time in a safe space. I'm just, it's literally just like a black blob. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to add one more thing. Oh, I didn't have enough time to draw my head. So I'm just going to sign it. A headless wonder. But I'm actually really proud of it. This is Monroe Bergdorf in latex. Ooh. Hang that in the tape. <laughs> The fingers um, could use a little work, especially these. It's giving me Babadook, <laughs> <laughs> member of the community. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please subscribe to Pop Buzz.